Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Henry Hong Lu. I'm the executive director and curator of Center A Vancouver International Center for Contemporary Asian Art. Thank you so much for joining us today for this panel discussion with Lisa Steele, Kim Tongzak, and Alvin Leung. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge that Center A is situated on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish First Nations, on which we create, learn, and live. Unceded means that this land was never surrendered, relinquished, or handed over in any way. We recognize that uh, the indigenous peoples who have been dispossessed from the homelands and territories upon which an institution was built and currently occupies and operates in. To acknowledge this traditional territory is to recognize the city and country's longer history predating confederation, one where indigenous peoples have lived since time immemorial. We encourage you to reflect on the history of the land that you are watching or st streaming from and the land's caretakers. Located in Vancouver's Chinatown, Center A also acknowledges and recognizes the complex and multi-layered experiences of the individuals and communities who have lived, built, and contributed to the vibrancy of this historic neighborhood and those who continue to do so today. Today's panel discussion will focus on uh, Lisa Steele and Kim Tongzak's video, The Afternoon Knows What the Morning Never Suspected from 2017, a reflection on war, national power, and migration. The panel discussion will be followed by a short Q&A and also moderated by Alvin Liu. The video is currently on view at Century A as part of our current exhibition, The Living Room, until the end of this month uh, and uh, the 28th of May, uh, specifically uh, for uh, Century A's um, uh, experiential project this year. Uh, we opened The Living Room, um, for which we uh, transformed our gallery space into a furnished living room space. And the visitors uh, uh, can have the opportunity to sit down uh, in the makeshift space and watch a series um, of uh, films and videos, uh, which include uh, Lisa and Kim's video. And um, uh, the video is currently part of the program two of the living room. And it's, um, uh, it's a program that really focuses on uh, sort of Canada's role um, and uh, in uh, the colonial uh, discourses, but also uh, uh, sort of the um, discontents of um, the multicultural um, uh, discourses and conversations, uh, and then specifically in terms of uh, extraction, um, inequality, and also intermediacy. And uh, it's um, uh, a program that uh, uh, really look into some of these uh, key concerns uh, in uh, the discourses discussed about, I mean, earlier. And um, uh, also by, you know, converting the, the, the space into a sort of uh, semi-domestic space, we hope to challenge this uh, kind of highly uh, curatorial nature of a contemporary art gallery. And uh, as part of the, the project, uh, we'll be able to uh, uh, spend more time with our visitors and to uh, also reconnect with us after uh, two years of uh, isolation. Um, and um, uh, the, the living room is also presented in partnership with uh, VTAPE and also uh, the SFU David Lamb Center. Um, and also a quick reminder that if you haven't seen the video, uh, my colleague Diane will uh, send a direct link to the video in the chat. Uh, so you'll be able uh, to see it uh, directly. And now let me introduce our uh, speakers today. Uh, Lisa Steele and Kim Tongzak have uh, collaborated since 1983, producing videotapes, performances, and photo text works that have been exhibited in festivals, museums, and galleries around the world. Their numerous grants and awards include the Bell Canada Prize for Excellence in Video Art, a Toronto Arts Award for Media Arts, and in 2005, a Governor General's Award for Lifetime Achievement in Visual and Media Arts. They are co-founders of VTAPE, a Toronto Media Arts 
Resource Center and our professors uh, emeriti at the University of Toronto in the John H. Daniels Faculty of Architecture, Landscape and Design. Elvin Leung works with stories of human migration, land and dialogues from diasporic working class communities to create artworks that reflect upon historical development uh, and its intimate effects on lives of people. Leung has shown and screened artworks at the Images Festival in Toronto, uh, Boris Lee Gallery in Beijing, uh, Good School in Jakarta, and the Polygon Gallery in uh, North Vancouver. Um, and uh, Elvin Leung has also uh, held research and resident artist appointments at the Inside Out, Inside Out Art Museum in Beijing. Uh, the Huangbian uh, Station Contemporary Art Research Center in Guangzhou, um, the Art Gallery of Ontario in Toronto, and also Gallery TPW. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to welcome uh, Lisa, Kim, and Elvin. And uh, Elvin, please take it away. Hey, uh, thanks everyone for uh, coming by today, and thanks for the introduction, Henry. And uh, I want to say hi to Lisa and Kim. Hi. Uh, for those who uh, uh, who uh, haven't kept an eye on the chat room, uh, the video we're discussing today uh, by Lisa and Kim, The Afternoon Knows What the Morning Never Suspected, uh, it's available for viewing and there's a link in the chat, uh, in the chat window for the Zoom. So I, if you haven't seen it, I recommend watching it and uh, maybe this discussion will lend itself to a second viewing as well. Um, so uh, I guess to start, um, I'm gonna start with like a general question about the video. Um, I'm wondering if you can walk us through the, the process of how the work came to be, uh, the decision-making processes for uh, the beginnings of wanting to create a work, uh, create this work. Um, and uh, with that in mind, like uh, sort of a part two to that question is, uh, did the timing of, uh, so, so this video was, create, was completed in 2017 and uh, was there any sort of relationship uh, to uh, the 150th year of Confederation in Canada? Well, I, I can speak to the, uh, to how we, we started. Um, if, uh, uh, we had, we began a research project that uh, was going to look at uh, uh, at the Vietnam War, basically, mm -hmm. and um, we had uh, we worked. The, our first research assistant was Ivana Dizdar, who is in the video and also, um, but helped us for about I, I'd say a full year ahead of time. She did a, a chronology, a time thing. She searched uh, for images and videos and things at the libraries and different things. So we had, a, by the time we, we started, we were, we'd been thinking about this for about a year. We had a big, a big whack of stuff, like a notebook filled with things because Ivana is quite a good researcher. And then uh, we were asked to be in an exhibition. Right, which was about the 150th yes. anniversary of Canada. Yeah. Um, so the, that was like the dream opportunity to, to you know, finish the work and, and put it uh, in the exhibition, which, which was, and of course the piece is quite critical of, of Canada. So that was, that seemed appropriate um, because there was so much critique about the, na the notion of that kind of show, you know, the kind of a focus on, on and, and the, the non-focus on the um, you know, the political um, problems. Yeah, that yeah, kind of especially story. in that moment, that was yeah. Uh, yeah. incredibly nationalistic. Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, it yeah. was, yeah, the curators were very good and they were, they were very inclusive of criticality. So that, that part was, it, was, it, was excellent. It was at the, uh, the Art Gallery of Ontario and the curators were Andrew Hunter and Anique Jordan. The co-curators and yeah and you're right and they were very open to, to critical, very open to critical, critical work critical work yeah that was the reframing nationhood show that's correct that's yes that's yeah right. yeah and then so uh, first of all i just wanted to say thank you to henry and, and and diane who's in the background there 
for uh, inviting the work into your gallery. It's mm -hmm. like a dream come true to show there at Century. We always thought that would be a great place to show. Mm -hmm. And from the, meet, from the beginning when uh, Henry uh, curated us into it, we thought a discussion with Alvin would be, would be really excellent because um, we have a great rapport with Alvin and, and, I, and he will bring up some critical things about the work, which is important to us. Um, but the, what I'd say to that on how we made decisions would be that, and we've worked this way a little bit before, what we, what we find is that it's important to give as much context as is necessary to look at a project or a work, an essay piece, I think this would be called, to look at that work and understand the context of where we're coming from, but then allow a kind of a personal, a very personal analysis of it as well. So to get that con to create the context, which we do up front, you know, this the historical footages, the which are all absolutely public, publicly mm -hmm. sourced, is nothing secret in any of it. It's all absolutely um, available information. But just to give a, a, a bit of a background so that people can understand where we're coming from in terms of the personal information that becomes uh, more more uh, prevalent at the at the latter part of the piece. And it seemed like at the that it was uh, because we just got so involved and engaged in like because if you study the 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 Vietnam War or what some call the American War as it says you you go backwards a long way in order to see where because uh, the Americans came in at a particular place after long after the French had had, had and that's talked about in the piece and uh, and and the, the way in which the country was um, was was dealt with in such a um, uh, by colonialism was uh, was really uh, it was really quite terrible and we wanted to sort of I think bring that to the fore but it quickly as quickly as we could because you know it's not a feature length piece and uh, you know we wanted to really so we really um, and also we at the, at the way it was originally presented, um, it was on three large flat screens um, at the AGO in a, in a room and the, with a bench in front of it so that you could, so the, the viewer actually could, uh, would look from one screen to the other. It's the way it is now, we have compressed it into a single viewing, but it, it really was meant to be a, that looking from screen to screen, we thought was an important, um, Initially, we thought that was an important thing to, to really physically engage the bodies of viewers rather than as a, a passive viewer. So that's that was part of our intention also. Mm -hmm. uh, for those who haven't seen the video, um, as Lisa and Kim were saying, it's a three channel piece. Uh, so three screens uh, horizontally, uh, so left, center, right. Um, and uh, the video, as as uh, Lisa and Kim and I were, were saying, um, uh, features archival footage, uh, whether that's uh, you know uh, uh, like uh, different uh, reportage photos of, of of the war and happening in Vietnam, and and different kind of contextual uh, news pieces, whether whether it's like an American conference or. Uh, uh, like a, a stage conference, a stage meeting of like Ho Chi Minh with a uh, fellow party cadre. And uh, uh, this archival footage is unraveling in front of us as viewers while there are two actors, uh, one of them being Avana Dizdar and uh, the other being Julia Hoon. Um, uh, while they're uh, narrating something, a uh, narrating is a script that, uh, Lisa and Kim have put together. And so uh, through, I'm guessing the use of green screen, uh, like their, their, their torsos appear on the screen and then behind them on um, the boat and on two channels is the archival footage unraveling uh, before the viewer. Um, uh, that kind of brings me to my first question. Um, uh, so from what I can tell, like, uh, uh, sort of as what you were alluding to in terms of like trying to build uh, a context for people. Uh, 
the video is very packed with information uh, that's trying to outline uh, developments in Asia Pacific uh, uh, in the 20th century uh, that that leads up to the Vietnam War. So this is uh, it includes discussions about um, uh, kind of the rise of communist organizing and communist direct action happening in Asia Pacific and uh, its, its perception as a threat towards uh, the Western order, uh, especially like in, in the end of the French colonial period and with the onset of the American hegem hegemony after World War II. Mm -hmm. um, and then it leads, it, uh, it leads to, uh, so from creating this context, uh, it then leads to uh, American perspectives about the war and then more relevant for us as Canadian, as Canadians, Canadian nationals or residents, um, it then leads into a discussion of uh, Canada's direct, but also kind of hidden involvement in the Vietnam War in terms of the procurement or the manufacturing of the means of war from, uh, you know, er everything from tools, boots, weapons, mines, uh, jet parts, machinery that were integral parts of the war effort uh, basically to be used in Vietnam uh, in one way or another. Um, and all of this information comes uh, delivered in, I, I would say, uh, uh, in something that I, I, I see in the video that is the uh, study session. And, and I think like it plays a very prominent role in the artwork. Uh, there's, there are some, there are some very short scenes uh, like after a cut where uh, one of the actors, uh, Julia, who, uh, uh, she holds a placard that says like study session 22, study session 23, um, almost as if like it's like a, I don't know, like a Brechtian reference to like uh, the clapboard of, uh, of mm -hmm. cinema production. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 so for me, like when this information is being delivered to us, it's being delivered to us in a study session. Uh, so in a, I see it as as us as viewers, we're actually in on the study session with the two actors, and a big part of the structure. It, so a big part of the, the the way the video is structured and delivered is through the study session, and then this is also uh, this translates pictorially to uh, through the tableau that you two set up where. Uh, the two actors, so Ivana and Julia, are seated on a rug on the ground. They have a blanket on top of them. Uh, uh, it's a domestic space or, you know, some kind of informal space where there's cushions behind them. And then surrounding them is uh, uh, library books or, or printed articles. And uh, this, to me, ends up reflecting on, like, almost a rite of passage that I think every young person uh, who is politically inquisitive or politically curious undergoes. And that is like the co-learning experience of like getting together to do a reading group or a discussion circle uh, to really talk about and understand uh, issues that aren't maybe discussed in mainstream politics or mainstream reportage or, or even in the university. Um, Totally. Uh, totally good reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, I think uh, that we we, yeah, we yeah. approach the study. We developed that in situ. We were um, uh, Alvin knows where this room is. We we had uh, booked the uh, the big studio at the U of T to do our shooting in, and um, we didn't. The only time I think we've ever done this, we didn't really know what we were going to do. We knew some some sections. We didn't know how to start. And uh, so the very first thing we did was two oh, two things. We we just asked uh, before, like they weren't in their like regular costume because they each have a kind of a, a, a costume that they picked to wear. Uh, but they were just in their regular street clothes and they stood up before the camera and they, they gave a, a, their life story. And we weren't sure how we were gonna use it, but as if when people look at the work, you'll see how we did use it. They, it comes in at the end where they tell yeah. each other's life stories 
But that was how we started. And then otherwise we had these books and we would, we would sit and we were developing this piece together mm -hmm. with them. We were learning things with them. We knew a lot and Ivana, because she had done a, lo a lot of the preliminary research and Julia, because she's a uh, um, uh, Vietnamese Canadian knows a lot of this. So they're, they're but um, we were putting it together, together. Yeah. So that that's where the study sessions, and we felt like, I think what we call them that is because if you do, it's, I, I think you're absolutely right that, that you have to get together in groups. And it was something that we certainly did in our, in our past. Uh, but it, you, if you want to learn something, you have to, you really have to go after it. You have to study it. And I think that that we really wanted to make that clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think your perception is is, yeah. is perfect about that. Yeah, you when you get into more complicated politics, yeah. Marxist Leninists, for example. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was I was thinking just that, like, um, like this 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 form of youth. I uh, I'm also friends with the two performers, uh, and also just for people who don't know, I was also you know, relatively in the same year uh, where I studied under Lee Sing Kim. Um, and I could also tell that they were, I mean, I knew that they were like in their early 20s at that point. And it's like, this is the moment where like people are very curious and the co-learning happens, uh, like, uh, uh, totally. or autodidacticism happens. And it's like, just as what Kim just referred to, uh, this, this formation of young people coming together to read critical histories or uh, theory or uh, uh, understanding oppressions that they face. It's like, uh, uh, to me, I thought that was reflective of, of yeah, like almost like a autobiographical hint from you two of like mm -hmm. how, uh, of your own, you, your own uh, coming to being as political artists. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. But then it also reflected uh some of the research that i do in terms of like uh you know this this simple formation of people studying together which is i'd say like maybe it's not exclusive but it's like there is like a leftist or a marxist leninist uh lineage to this or a historical route to it uh it can be from it can be as simple as it can have the effect of political awareness like that that we engage that we experience as viewers uh, being in on the study session that you present, but then it also has like a, on maybe the extreme end, it has a radicalizing direct action uh, uh, output given cert under certain circumstances uh, uh, where, uh, so for example, like Ho Chi Minh was working in Southern China in 1927 or right up to 1927, uh, translating, uh, Theory from the Soviet Union to Chinese uh, to Chinese uh, comrades uh, before going back to Vietnam and and translating that to to Vietnamese uh, sympathizers. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it was a really interesting string uh, to have be this co-learning picture. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it was very funny because when uh, before Kim and I made our first work, or maybe concurrent with our very first work. Uh, we were taking a, we did a, a, a reading group together called the Marxist Feminist Freudians, mm. which was uh, uh, taught by Varda Burston, which affected our entire um, production for a number of years mm -hmm. after that. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, so this was very familiar to us, but we, it was uh, it was really interesting that we ended up back there with with, with this piece because um, it's quite different than you know without a script and without a you know, the, the whole other the apparatus that we had had before. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also like the co-learning, I, 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 I wasn't I was alive for that time, but I'm guessing these co-learning circles were also quite integral to uh, anti-war movements, um, yeah. like organizing, because yeah. uh, it was all linked together. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, so kind of transitioning after you know, this very important chunk of the, of the video, uh, what I'd say like this, the study session structure, mm -hmm. uh, that to me is like uh, reflective of like, 
almost a top-down learning learning experience because because we're, re, we're we're looking back in hindsight of what mm -hmm. things have happened. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we then get a more intimate picture of uh, uh, the video transitions into a more intimate picture of a lived ex of a lived experience of a draft dodger mm -hmm. um, uh, through personalized uh, letters that are like let's say like dear mom august 18 I, I forget the date but but like uh suddenly like the 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 two co-learners no longer become studiers they become narrators of uh, of a personal experience of someone who has left the states and has come to canada and uh uh while that's also happening uh through narration uh there's also archival footage of intimate effects of the war happening in Toronto. So uh, that's like a outlining a certain, like, a like companies and industries that were uh, involved in the manufacturing of war goods. Um, and also uh, like, a, uh, you, you can correct me if, if the placement of these things are, are, are incorrect, but like there's also the, uh, like a picture of a bombing case in Toronto where certain leaders of war industries in Canada who were living in Toronto had their houses bombed by, uh, I guess, direct action. Uh, we did, that was, that's interesting that you raise that because that was something that in spite of all of the uh, research that we had done, we didn't know that it came up mm -hmm. in with with Julia and uh, and and Ivana. Whereas this, one of us, we're, we're always on computers. We're in that room and we're you know we're figuring out what's going to do be next and everything. And all of a sudden that came up and we just yeah. followed it and found that uh, information. And it wasn't it wasn't in our chronology or in our wasn't something we knew at all. So that was really mm. fun. it's it's interesting. It's not in our consciousness. Like no. It's, we all know about the FLQ bombings. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows about that. Mm -hmm. um, and the Hawker Sidley bombings are, I don't, I've never heard this. We had stories. never heard that before. Um, yeah, and then, yeah. yeah. I, it was public. It was totally yeah. public. Yeah. 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 And, if, and for those that don't know, uh, I think it's on Wikipedia, but it's like the perpetrators are never discovered either. So it was, it was like, a, yeah. And, and I want to move on, but like just going back to the study session, I could, I was also kind of like I was kind of reminded of uh, uh, the Godard film *The Chinois*, where it's mm -hmm. like totally. like youth yeah. in a study session, and then it at least in this case it leads to a very you know uh, a bombing. You know, it's it's like a very mm -hmm. it becomes very dogmatic. Uh, so so I just thought like this is another reflection of the study group. Um, uh, in the draft dodging section of the video, um, I'm assuming a part of it is uh, autobiographical. Um, uh, it it's interesting to me because it's like um, uh, so. For those who don't know, like uh, my my parents are also refugees, or my family in Canada, like we're all refugees as, as a result of the war or for uh, the Vietnam War or uh, kind of the, the moments after it. Um, when I view these, uh, that moment of the draft dodging uh, section of the video where uh, it's narrated in kind of first person in terms of letters written back home to presume, so of someone living in Toronto, writing back home to some, somewhere in America, uh, that also in some way, in a very different severity, reminds me of uh, the experience or like, but what I've heard of the what the experience was like for my parents to suddenly get displaced and uprooted to go to Canada, where some sometimes your only means of communication are letters back home, yeah. And it's like, uh, uh, I think what's really interesting in this moment is uh, is the subtlety in what's happening in our ears through narration and what's happening on the screen. Uh, so you know very prominently there's like uh moments where uh uh this character that the narrator narrates it's uh so there's like a moment where it's like dear mom i got a job at the university uh like things are stabilizing but then 
uh, unbeknownst to mom is what we see on the screen, which is like a cut to a university art class with uh, a, a nude, a nude uh, model in a life drawing class or like uh, a part of the script where it says like, dear mom, I got a job in hospitality, it pays in tips. And then it cuts to a very, uh, a very notorious nightclub, strip club in Toronto, which is the Zanzibar club. And I thought that was really touching in the sense that like, it paints a picture of longing for family or longing for home while also trying to keep face and also like not trying to have people worry about you. Uh, as you're, you know, you're living in a very precarious time. You're, you're literally just uprooted and it, it's quite a, mm, you know, uh, difficult moment in life. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just wondering if you can discuss like the intimacy in that part of the, that video and also the way that intimacy is delivered to us as viewers by giving us the ability to read between the lines in terms of like, what's being disclosed to family and what's mm -hmm. and what we see on the screen. Just before we start, there, before that section starts, there's several quotes from The Harbinger, which was ah. the Toronto's free press in that era. Um, and those are quite, because that really, that, that really brings in a lot of the stuff around uh, the, the draft dodging too, or, and, and, mm. and around that the community that was, uh, had was growing up now in Toronto that uh, mm -hmm. but yeah but that's it. and also the publication of the draft dodgers guide the guide yeah the which draft. Toronto was really instrumental well, it was instrumental it was it was created here yeah, yeah. and they were right right they were distributed right. by thousands and thousands and they were but they were distributed to me I I came from the states and they were distributed and I worked with the draft dodger community uh, uh, and people who went in, into conscientious objection and went to jail and stuff. But we, we did counseling sessions on campus because I was in the university then, but we used that uh, document uh, mm. uh, to, 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 to help people to come to Canada. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, the, I used it to come to Canada with my then husband uh, who was a draft dodger. And we oh, came I just, yeah. just want to add, uh, for those who haven't seen the video, it's uh, there are scenes in the in the video that cut to documents in the Harbinger uh, that have things that that are that have things that that are like uh, call this number when you arrive uh, to like Toronto and and we'll help you out and uh, so it's 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 like a mutual aid effort for 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 draft dodging yeah. and getting planted in some way. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. <laughs> I love the uh, the John and Yoko part where the Harbinger uh, reporters were not perhaps the top drawer people. So they said we weren't really able to uh, to give you to exactly what they said, but we're not sure why. <laughs> we're not sure why they weren't able to. But anyways, it's a great part. Though. But you're 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 quite right. So there was this whole network mm -hmm. of of um, support for draft doctors, and in some cases. Um, uh, deserters as well, which was even trickier because mm -hmm. uh, the American government government did not look lightly on deserters, mm -hmm. but they were all they were part of this movement movement as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, the whole uprooting which you mm -hmm. went through, the mm -hmm. restarting your life, mm -hmm. the trying to figure out employment, um, and how to stay in touch with the people that you have left behind was very different. Like, and not alarm them because of because you're you know and um there's a uh, we when we develop the line where it says like uh, dear mom um I, I was going to phone you but we you know we couldn't we, we were supposed to get a phone on friday but nobody nobody had the, 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 right, the idea. right id to get a tell we used to have to go to getting to, a phone in those days it was, was like, like unbelievable mm, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, one person in the house might have enough stuff that they could go and because you always lived in a commune too. Like you always lived in a, some kind of a communal house with six, eight, 10 people. Um, and they, they were all, uh, th that was what was done because it was the only way you could afford to live. Um, and even though it wasn't as expensive now, but that's, you just, there was no money that nobody had a job. 
nobody, one person might have a job and that would be great. And then somebody else would get another thing. And, you know, then part-time people, work. part-time work, people would be, I was an artist model. That is something that I did do. That was a, and I could uh, make a, a, a living doing that. Cause I, I also took want ads at the newspaper and all the rest would send mm-hmm. people waitresses that the guys got together and did window washing. I mean, it was, you know, it was really, and these are all people Started with uni- un- university yeah. degrees, but yeah, you know, yeah. like the, we were immigrants like anybody else so that you don't have any Canadian experience. So mm-hmm. you don't, very few people got um, teaching jobs. A few did, some did, some mm-hmm. did. David Escobar did, you know, a few of those people, but um, so, you know, their skills were not, uh, none of our skills were used until for me much, much, much later. The project has an overarching uh, idea to it that I think is worth talking about. And that is, mm-hmm. um, how do you make sense of your own history? Mm-hmm. Like, how do you, how do you, it's quite a while ago, like all the, you know, that it, it, it's, like 50 years or more now, basically for the, when it was, when the war was at its most intense. And um, how do you remember it? How do you make sense of it? And, and the whole, the whole problem with the, 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 well, the Canadian aspect had so many problems, like so hypocritical to make uh, vast amounts of money through arms sales when we uh, were claimed that we were not involved in the war whatsoever, mm-hmm. which is of course not true. And the other thing is, how were we open armed to draft dodgers at this point? And we hear Pierre Trudeau, the prime minister at the at the time, says, "Well, look, we don't know how many draft dodgers we've got because we don't keep we don't ask them at the border. It's not relevant to us." So there's some sort of thing that we were trying to discover, you know, trying to make sense of how is this contradiction, this mm-hmm. tremendous contradiction, absolutely. Um, okayed by everybody officially? And how do we come off remembering our participation in the Vietnam War as being a benevolent recipient of people who were opposed to war? How do we, how can we believe that somehow? And it's and it's another question I think that we're, we've come up against in a couple of our pieces uh, where it's, we're, uh, in terms of being Canadian, in terms of being in Canada, well, we're not as bad as you know, we're, 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 you know, yeah, we've done some things, we're not as bad as, and I think it's that we were, tr- particularly with this case. That amnesia yeah. as well, that kind yeah. of, we're yeah. really brilliant at it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and I, you know, and I think there's, uh, I, I think there's, you know, when we look at truth and reconciliation and, mm-hmm. and the uh, anti-colonial movement that's happening and, you know, the history that we're, that uh, the First Nations are, you know, really unveiling mm-hmm. really a lot right now, constantly. Like that is that is because all of that has been buried so successfully. Mm-hmm. All of that history has been com- not completely buried, but mostly completely buried. And mm-hmm. I think that I think the project now here is to get is to unbury that history. Mm-hmm. And in our little way, this is a, a, not as monumental as that project, but in this way, we were really trying to like. Mm-hmm. How did this happen? How can we believe this mm-hmm. when yeah, yeah. it's absolutely public information? All of this stuff, nothing was yeah. hidden. Anyways, yes. that's that's the overarching kind of uh, you know craziness of of go- going into one's own history and trying to make sense of it, which I don't know if, if you can ever really do that. But and then yeah, yeah, and then we did bring it as you said, we did bring it into a really personal. Yes, we brought it into this person. And then we come out of it, I think, with the two um, testimonials or those those to, to life stories that are so um, that are so drastic. I mean, both of them are. You are know, you referring to the the last moment with? Yes. The, yeah. Yeah. The, okay. The two lives. Yeah. 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 So that's so, so that's that's the moment uh, again for people who haven't seen it. Where uh, I'd say it's. It's the last chapter in a way, or mm-hmm. it is the last chapter where uh, the two performers, Julia and Ivana, they they read about each other, or like they read they read and narrate a script about each other, uh, and then 
behind them. Uh, so I guess through green screen again, they're like superimposed uh, onto Young Street. So it's a street in Toronto, but uh, it's a street that runs throughout Ontario. Uh, uh, so the province of Ontario. So it's quite a long street. And then it's, it's just a car ride down Young Street, I'm presuming. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we <clears throat> see the two actors, uh, you know, they stand like, like this in front of the camera. They don't say anything, but then the voice of the other actor reads their life, not their life story, but like the process of becoming a refugee or, 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 or their parents becoming a refugee or like the, the process of migrating and ending up in, in, in Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 it's, it's interesting to me in, in, in like at this part, this point in the video, because like the, myself as a viewer, I could tell they're reading a script, like it's not conversational. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And for me, like the tone of voice that the actors in the script is uh, kind of delivered in is very similar to the first chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, and it sounds, or it's narrated in a way that uh, it's almost as if like, it's how a newspaper would describe uh, like a second generation refugee. Mm -hmm. uh, uh which these people are uh or or, or you know children of refugees um so in a way they go from co-learning to or co-studying to like studying each other yeah. uh yeah uh so yeah like, I, i'm wondering i'm wondering okay. if you could talk about like uh this final chapter where we suddenly learn about the actors themselves which is sometimes like it's 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 quite a generous thing to do to to involve your actors to the point where they talk about themselves and then of course at the end uh they are credited as like researchers and performers uh but uh, yeah i'm wondering yeah what's what's the decision process of this final moment i was thinking about this earlier today and um there's something that is it's difficult uh to admit as an older person, as a person that's lived for quite a while. And that is the, the, the notion of history re repeating itself. Mm -hmm. mm. And the, the notion that we, maybe we aren't learning mm -hmm. as we go along, maybe we're, and, and that's where I think that the problem, you know, the project of trying to correct misremembering or mm -hmm. challenge misremembering is, comes in for me but I was thinking about that earlier, like, are we, you know, there's so many things that are happening politically right now in the world that are just like, we have been here, we have done this, it didn't work out very well. Um, but I'm not sure, quite sure if that's why we did Julia and, and uh, Ivana at that point. Well, they're, they're fascinating. Their lives are fascinating. Well, I, I guess, it, I mean, it did have to do with, because in the middle of the story is in addition to the whole political environment was this migration, mm. this uh, uh, this this move, and that they had both involved were involved in that. And as I say, just our instincts were to do that right off the bat. Mm -hmm. The very first thing we mm -hmm. did was those uh, stories, and then we we transcribed them and edited them down and stuff. But I wanted to share something with um, um, this piece was shown in a thing called Rencontres uh, Paris Berlin in 2019, I think. And um, one of us was able to go over because it was just for two days. So, so I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a better traveler than Kim. So I went and you know got off the plane, got up the next morning, showed the piece and came, got back on the plane. Where was it? It was at the Louvre, <laughs> which was, we had a show at the Louvre anyway, <laughs> which was really super exciting. But um, I was, and I don't think I'd really thought about it much before that, but in, in, in the course of talking with Julia in particular during the making of this, and then when it was going to be, we, we talked to her about her parents and if she had, would she show the piece to her parents? She was, uh, she told us something that was so interesting and it stuck in my mind, obviously. And that was, she said, you know, her parents, um, are so grateful to Canada 
for for taking them in, welcoming them after that. And when you see the piece, if people haven't seen it, when you do see it, I mean, they had months and months of travel and boat. They were boat people. They were in a boat for, you know, such a long time. They separated. were they were separated. Yeah. They were in refugee camps. Like they were. It was a really quite an ordeal. And um, so when they they went to Peterborough, a little community, and there's a few other people of their of the Vietnamese community. So uh, that's where they live, and they cannot. She says they really can't hear any criticism of Canada because it's they're they're too invested in the country that took them in like they then she was saying you know that on Canada Day they buy flags and they do like it's like a big deal for them when she said that to me I stored that somewhere and when I was talking about the piece and when I was at, at, at the Louvre when somebody asked a question about something I said well it's so funny because all the information that we dug up at, about Canada's involvement and the money and stuff like that. I had already knew that I had done, and I think I sent you the, I'd done some research on, on things uh, on the Vietnam War uh, to write about uh, Apocalypse Now. Mm -hmm. And I had all those books. I had Snow Job by Charles Taylor, whatever the guy's name was. I had that. And I, even though I had read it and I knew about it, I put it away. It was not, I, I, I didn't, it was not, I, I was one of those people too. Canada had taken me in. I was raw, raw. I was a Canadian nationalist. Oh, interesting. Right the, wow. Right the way through. I was absolutely, yeah. when, we, when free trade thing came in, we were like pounding the pavement against it and all this kind of stuff. And I, I was absolutely over this, over compensating for this and realized that when I was there talking about the piece, that I was exactly the same way that Julia's parents were. I couldn't mm -hmm. accept a critique. And it wasn't until we started to do this piece that it, well, I was you, actually- You re-remembered. I re-remembered, yeah. My own stuff that I had known that I had, because I, I could never have talked about that in the, when I, you know, in the late 60s, early 70s when I, was here like if well, I people were too busy building yeah you know we're, yeah you're too busy trying, yeah. trying to get so anyway out. that was just kind of an interesting aside I think but yeah yeah I think that's really that's really quite beautiful to be able to relate in that in, in that kind of a way mm -hmm. um uh so uh maybe this should have been mentioned earlier uh in the discussion but um uh, just to give a, I mean, it's only numbers, so it's not really, you can't really comprehend magnitude, but um, so in the video, it does say, so like uh, between 1964 to 1966, uh, so this is the beginnings of, I guess, the American involvement in the, in the, in the Vietnam War. Um, Canada's GDP rose by 6% per year, uh, and that's like an incredible amount, uh, mm -hmm. like in the, I'm not an economist, but like from what I understand, like at least in liberal capitalist democracies, so like US, Australia, EU, uh, like our government's plan for 2% per year. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I don't know if this is a fair comparison, but like somewhere like uh, in China, contemporary China, they plan for 6% per year growth. And so like for an economy to be so, mm -hmm. For the Canadian economy at that time to be so, to have a growth rate of six percent, uh, is incredible, and uh, yeah. I'm, and it's, it's in producing armaments to blow people up. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's it's quite a seismic. It, it's three times more economic activity than normal. Yeah. It's like three times more more activity and and production. So it, it's quite an astounding figure to, uh, to think and about. Virtually no unemployment. Yeah. Eventually. Unemployment yeah. Was so Just low. Like. Yeah. 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 Uh, the video also states, uh, so at that time, it was $2.7 billion generated between the start and end of the war, uh, at least in, in Canadian terms, or like in, in profits? Is, is that the right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, in, in sales. profits. In sales. Yeah. Oh, yeah, in sales, which is $4.8 in 2017. Uh, so it's, it's a tremendous amount of capital that yeah. yeah, I think 14, 14 billion. 
Yeah. Uh, 14. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, it's... no, it was a huge economy. And I mean, on the cover of McLean's magazine, I know probably nobody knows what McLean's magazine is, but it's a national uh, glossy. It's like Time Magazine Time for magazine. Canada. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. On the cover of, of, of the magazine was we were making a fortune from Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So it was like an open, uh, mm. we, were not, we were all aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, yeah, it's such an interesting time too, because you delve back into that. And there were these explosions in Toronto, but in the United States at that point, there were hundreds of explosions all the time yeah. from yeah. leftist student groups, um, uh, the Weather Underground, um, Students for a Democratic Society. There were equivalents in, in, in Canada as well, but you know, they were mostly, they didn't, Try to harm people. They were, but they were explosions against property, against uh, the places where yeah. the draft was being organized, or the recruitment centers for the for the military. People were not everybody, but a lot of people were very, very politically active at this point. Well, the group mm -hmm. that I was with when I uh, before I left the states, we had the uh, plans for the um, the what was this it was called it had a name the selective service office or something in butler missouri which is south of kansas city which is where i'm from and we had the plans and there was certainly talk of of a, a bombing and you know the guys are going to the library and getting the books and thinking this is really so stupid you're going to the library to get a book about how to build bombs this is really not a surveillance good idea. <laughs> this is like surveillance and, wasn't <laughs> What it is. Yeah. And uh, but then uh, one of the other women, because uh, it was there were women and men in my co my my collective yeah. thing there, and we're looking and we're saying, well, you know, there's an apartment above this thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you we know, can't, we can't we, blow we, up. We the really apartment. can't do this. So yeah, we, that, that sounds like the Godard film. It was. Yeah. It's true. But yeah. o o over that the next weekend, we all started to plan to come to Canada because it was mm. just to, it. it it was just going nowhere, you know, and everybody was being drafted at that point. Like they were, all yeah. the guys were, were. They stepped up the war yeah. so much. Yeah, during... the, 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 the lottery happened and then, then they just, you know, they were just taking everybody. As soon as you graduated from college, you were, you were. Yeah, yeah. So it was a serious that, crisis. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. really yeah. serious. And that, um, I think that was. A, that was a breaking point. A breaking point for a, a lot of people who ended up coming. Mm -hmm. to Canada, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I had something in my mind, uh, and it kind of slipped. Um, uh, oh yes, so so may, maybe going back to uh, thinking about like uh, in your. Uh, when going back to the reflection where uh you spoke about uh like when like would would julia show her parents this film mm -hmm. uh which is quite critical of the canadian state or the canadian project um it's an interesting question uh and uh you know myself you know uh coming from a similar situation as julia's um i'd say you know perhaps like uh it's uh, it's like it's our job to now think about these things, like, like my generation's job to think mm -hmm. about like mm -hmm. like what the hell happened and, and like like how is it possible? Like uh, you, mm -hmm. you know, like like to ask these questions, and I think it's like uh, maybe it's I think it's definitely something that you couldn't have predicted, but um your film or your video was released in 2017 and then three years later it was the 45th anniversary of the ending of the war or or, or the liberation liberation day in vietnam which is a celebrated day like a national holiday um uh uh but also at the same time like uh all those the kids of all those refugees. Uh, I mean, I mean, there's 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 certain generations. So there's like a generation that's like uh, in their 30s and 40s, but uh, I'd say like maybe the generation that was born in the West. Uh, 
we're all reaching our 20s at the same time mm -hmm. and it's like we're at a point where we're all asking these questions at the same time mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. and so it's like uh yeah I, I just wanted to reflect like maybe this film isn't meant isn't actually meant for for like julie's parents it's actually meant for us like uh yeah. like like, like, like the, the kids who, who actually who are distanced enough from the state and you know who have been educated by people like you uh to question these things mm -hmm. uh uh so that was just one insight that i wanted to share um and uh maybe like you know we are at the one hour mark and i i want to maybe i'll just ask one more question uh and feel feel free to please like uh you know ask something in q a or in the chat as well or any kind of reflection um uh so this is a question that i that i already hinted at hinted for you and kim uh uh it's like um so for those that don't know like lisa and kim so they've been practicing artists for a very long time but also interspersed with their practice as as artists and also as like art organizers and artist run culture in canada uh they're also uh they've had very long careers as educators and formal educators at university of toronto as uh teachers in in visual art uh uh you know some of the classes is like are like uh imaging the political all right so it's like it's teaching students to look look at things in a certain way uh as, as artists who can respond politically um i'm just wondering like uh like if you can reflect on like how it feels or thoughts of like sudden uh, of of at some point just encountering the children of Vietnamese refugees uh, who are coming to you either as like your students or people you mentor or work with uh, as as professors or as art organizers. Uh, uh, it's like like the war happened and it's it's a radicalizing event. It's Lisa's origin story in a way as well, yeah. um, and then you know tens of years later, it's like suddenly uh, these kids reach their 20s and you're teaching them. So I'm, I'm just wondering like, yeah, if you can reflect on just what it's like or, yeah. Hmm. What did I think I please? Well, we did get some, we did get really interesting challenge from a young student in Queens when we were doing a lecture there, a talk there. And he, he kind of like said, uh, I don't think it's exactly what you're, it, I don't think you're exactly right about what you're talking about. It's kind of like what you're, you're talking about your generation who are actually challenging our preconceptions about the previous generation mm -hmm. being, you know, loyal to Canada and all that kind of stuff. And he says, no, that's not, that's not the way it is right now. And we're, we're, we're moving on from that. And we're, we're going to, so I don't buy your, that part of your project. And we were both like, we were really pleased actually with that kind of, um, with that kind of a challenge and also a correction maybe like, yeah. cause well, you know, you do something and then you learn from it and then you, well, hopefully you learn from it. Um, but he was very much talking about that, that the, yeah, the kid, people your age, cause he was just, he was just finishing, I think at Queens and a Vietnamese Canadian kid. And he was like, no, oh, we're, we're really, we are now critical of this, of the, of the Canadian government. It's, yeah. it's, we are able to be critical. And um, so we had a great talk with them afterward anyway. It was really interesting. Um, the educational project is at its worst. We don't hear what students say, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Because they're supposed to hear what we say. Mm -hmm. And our project is, is like, you know, the Western canon and Right. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. But um, I hope that we have been over the years a bit more open than that. But I, I always found that when students actually speak up or share things with me, that um, I'm a, I'm really grateful, and b, I'm totally ignorant mm -hmm. for the most part. So it becomes mm -hmm. a completely excellent learning experience. Mm -hmm. And the but you know, students are very shy, so that doesn't happen very often. But it does happen mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. with you and Julia for sure, and other and other students. Yeah. Um, but politics can be tricky to to 
to bring into the classroom. And what is what can happen, which is very problematic, is that people get very guilty mm -hmm. about things if you're not careful. So we did a number of years um, focusing the imaging, the political on uh, truth and reconciliation commission and the work and also the Indian Act. The Indian Act yeah. and also on, on the um, there was a movement, uh, Idle No More, mm -hmm. which was, we don't hear much from them right now, but it was very active uh, a while ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And it, it was one of those things that it was a great teaching moment because it was now, it was actually happening now and young people were mm -hmm. on the street and they could not just, they could not only read about, um, you know, the TRC, mm -hmm. but they could actually experience it. And from peers, like young people who were their age, who were on the streets protesting or making making things known. That was a really, that was a great experience. But it, it also, it is what you, but what happened in that also, um, that they would make artworks based on, but often the, the, you know, some of the best students in the class would just be they would be mortified that they didn't know this information, that they had gotten to be that old, you know, they were in university and they didn't know the Indian Act. They didn't know what had happened. Certainly didn't know, what we even we weren't even talking about residential schools very much mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. But it was, um, you could, so you had to really be very, you know, very aware and not uh, of, of like, look, nobody knew. This isn't your, you know, you weren't taught. And it wasn't until then a number, I know probably after that, was maybe about four years after that, that class and um, the, the couple of years that we'd been using that material in that, uh, we had an exhibition at VTAPE, uh, Scalinati, who's an indigenous artist from Montreal. And she uh, was, showed her work. And then there were a whole bunch of, uh, cause I was still teaching that big first year class. And they, I had assigned it, so you know there were probably you know fifteen kids there uh, after the after her talk who wanted to talk to her, and they had been taught. Mm -hmm. It is starting. So the kids who are now like, you know, eighteen, uh, you know, who are younger than you or seventeen, they have been. It has come into. So that was interesting mm -hmm. for, for yeah. us to see how you know mm. potentially. The, uh, the education thing can, but whether this information that we're talking about in here about the Canada's involvement in Vietnam War, whether this will ever make it into that. I'm not sure. You know? the, I mean, the, the mantra is uh, we, welcome, we welcome the boat people to Canada. That's right, yeah. So that, again, like we welcome the draft dodgers. We, we welcome the boat people. That's like, right. so if, you, if that was your understanding of that, of our involvement with the Vietnam War, that would really influence how you how you mm -hmm. think and how you mm -hmm. politically understand that. Um, but as we talked about already, there has been so much slippage around that, and that was the that was our goal is to try and yeah. unslip it a little bit. Maybe yeah yeah yeah. We should, maybe we should just ask if anybody has a comment. If nobody it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. a question. Yeah. But, are there any comments or anything? Because we surely someone's going to accuse us of being didactic. <laughs> That's the least you can do. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a study, there's a whole study session structure. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> we we made a work once and we showed it to Kim's father, who is a lovely man, and he, he said you'd have to be dead not to get that. <laughs> Mm, that's one of our favorite quotes. So we're like, okay, I guess we, I guess we came on a little, a little hard with that one. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, if there's no questions, uh, maybe, I mean, I have, I have one more that I kind of prepared. I mean, it's more of a form question. Oh, I think there is a new question. And I have a question for uh, him eventually. Uh, Vera Frankel says, "Not didactic at all." But then I have to view your video. But your discussion is very moving. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, so like you, maybe Alvin. one last question yeah. or that you can I answer. I love your questions, Elvin. Please keep oh. asking. <laughs> okay. 
uh, <laughs> that you can you can answer very quickly. Um, so I kind of felt like the video, the last chapter, wasn't actually the uh, uh, Ivana and uh, Ivana and Juliet reading about themselves, mm -hmm. but the last chapter is actually. So the video closes with a scrolling, yeah, uh, yeah. like upwardly scrolling mm -hmm. text of uh, and a pretty exhaustive list of the items that Canadians manufactured. Uh, I don't know, it's like, it's like F, F11, I don't know, engine, like, you know, mm -hmm. parts, yeah. like parts and machinery and chemical components uh, that were used and sprayed in Vietnam. Um, I'm just wondering if you can talk artistically about uh how it appears at the in the video um so uh so after the narrators talk about themselves uh kind of the official credits happen where it's like uh julia and ivana performers and researchers and then i then there's another credit that appears on the screen that's that says uh co-editor vlad lunin and then those credits disappear and, and then there's there's a uh, the production date of the video or production year 2017 and then after those credits disappear almost like the extended credits of a film suddenly uh text starts scrolling upwards but instead of a wider cast and crew it's everything that the you know it's things that the canadians produced uh to be used to be spent in in vietnam uh I'm just wondering, yeah, I mean, to me, it reads as like a credit, but also as like a, as like a, the final credit is like Canada's involvement in the war. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if you can speak about, uh, and, and just like for people who haven't seen it, it's like these credits take a very, or this part of the, the this list, this listing of these items take a very prominent placement in the video because it suddenly, it the text doesn't appear in the central video channel anymore it actually spans all three channels. So you can't, you're confronted with it. So I'm wondering if you could just speak about that. <clears throat> I think we, I, I'm so glad that you asked us for an art, like an, art, an artistic mm -hmm. consideration of why we do this or why we mm -hmm. do that. Because of course we're, that's half of what we do, if not more, is like, how does this look? How does this feel? Yeah. How does this sound? How does yeah. this, is this effective in, in that? And, I think in um, our works lately, in the last 10 or 20 years maybe, there's more space mm -hmm. and more room for a kind of meditative uh, viewer viewership, like a kind of a, where you can settle in and let things go over you and you don't have to like analyze it particularly. And that's how I feel about that, that you know, the, the Young Street shot and then the, the, the credit, I love the credits part, the extensive credits at the end, but the, yeah, the list of items, I don't know, it, is that going well, it does, but it, But we should say that the original work, this is a modification of the original mm. work. Mm. The original work was on the three large flat screens, bang, bang, bang. And there were some other items. There was, uh, there were two vitrines and we had, uh, uh, we had uh, the Pentagon. The actual the, Pentagon the, papers. papers marked at where uh, a, a section where it talks about um, um, the guy who, uh, who, to, to, who carried the messages back and forth. We also had some patches that were, um, oh, I should have brought one down, uh, that were from, uh, that this good friend of ours, Max Allen had collected. They were the patches that the, uh, that the, 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 the army and the Marines made, they, they, they designed them and they were uh, like military patches. Military patches for yep. their... And often you get them for a campaign. So the yeah. campaign yeah. over, you know, might be live, but I'm not yeah. going to say it. But yeah. so different campaigns, and they were very, they could make, they would commission them yeah. uh, in Vietnam. And the, the Vietnamese women would basically sew these patches. Wow. And some of them are By, so, so super terribly violent, violent. super violent. So that was we, we so that went, he loaned us some of those and then and then uh, finally there was the, the the scrolling text that you see at the end was in fact a scroll. It was oh, it, uh, I see. Feet, like yeah, ten feet tall, and, and it was just pinned at the top and just unrolled 
and to the bottom so that so that it had a physical presence like that 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 this is um this is how m much we're talking this about is, and, I, and so you can see all of the items all at once so yeah. it's quite mm -hmm. i'm not so sure i i like i do like the the new version i do too better than that uh, i think yeah. it has more impact and yeah. more i mean we were filling space basically too because we had quite a big space to fill and so yep, yep. it uh uh, but but we did debate on how, what we would do, and then we finally ended up producing that. But and when we went to make it a, a, a to convert it to a single channel work, uh, that seemed because we also had um, so much Young Street footage. We started on the summer solstice, right? Did we start on the the the, the, the day of the equal day okay. and night? We started before dawn, way way up on Young Street. And drove down. So of course we have like I don't know, forty minutes of footage, um, that uh, of that Young Street uh, uh, area, um, and there wasn't. And we went right to the water. Yeah. But we only get to about I don't know where do we get Gillard or something. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But but we had all that, so it, it in the end we could use it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Does that help? Does that answer the? Yeah. 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 I think that that's. Really great. But uh, Henry, did you? Spreading it across the three was really. Uh, yeah, that was nice. That was yeah. that that was uh, in order to to um, to really make it big, like the the, the original. School. I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was something quite affective about like re seeing that list and mm -hmm. driving down the street that's basically been un untouched by conflict. Um, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Abs that you're quite right that we really that was something that we really thought about a lot yeah that we're we have not had uh, war on our on our you know in on our, our land, on not, our not, land for a long time you yeah. know um and uh yeah yeah I mean, so, I mean, I, sometimes i like to, to to say it's it's not so bad to be boring <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Henry, did you have something that you wanted to say? No, I just I just wanted to thank you, uh, all three of you. I think this has been really it's so great to hear about uh, sort of the making of the the, the work and then uh, the sort of the more historical perspectives and um, um, yeah, and for the the wonderful questions, Elvin, uh, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, when I saw the film, uh, definitely, I think that um, it's um, there's text, there is um, a footage, um, there is um, storytelling, uh, but everything comes together in a manner that's really um, kind of very calm, mm -hmm. uh, informative. Uh, but also, uh, you know, there's no extra sort of, uh, um, there's no sort of dramatization of um, uh, these events and the facts. And then uh, I think that really gives it uh, quite a, a sort of spotlights for some of these storytelling and then really um, to give people the space to think through uh, these uh, kind of, um, uh, well, the stories, but also um, it's definitely a work that um, I encourage everybody to take time with. And then um, this might sound like a pluck, but please come to the living room and then sit down and watch uh, the film. Is we actually have quite some cultures and we're very comfortable. And uh, um, so, yeah, but I, I, I really appreciate the work and um, and and so wonderful to have all of you to uh, to speak about it today. Well, and then it's I'm so glad, and also this program is dedicated to this work specifically because um, sometimes when we have programs or uh, talks, um, they are not uh, might not always have the luxury to kind of delve into one work uh, specifically right. and take time with it. So uh, I'm so glad to uh, to have been able to do that today. Thank you so much, uh, Henry. Thank you, Alvin, for your questions. Thank you, Henry, and everybody at Center A. Just uh, really, really uh, 
wonderful opportunity for us to, um, we knew Alvin would really, um, would really take us on a trip. <laughs> Cause oh, he's, a, he's very good at that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. a very close reader and uh, I really appreciate. Me too. Me too. And also Learned thanks to, to uh, Ivana and Julia in the film yeah, as well, who yeah. I also personally know. So it's uh, it's good to revisit the work because I also I saw it when the, the film, uh, the video was um, uh, at the AGO. Uh, it's a, it, it was a slightly different experience because there was no seating for that work. I remember you kind of... Uh, well, you was, there was one was little, there, a little bench. But, but just oh, only, a little bench. People, only two people could sit there. So often yeah. people would be standing, you know, if there were three people, one person was standing. So yeah, yeah, it wasn't. Uh, Anyways, yeah. This is, it's so great to be able to see it in the gallery, but yeah. also see it online too. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Not everyone can be in Vancouver right now, but. Thanks, yeah, thanks for this opportunity. It's terrific. Thank you. And on that yeah, note, thank you. Uh, so we, you, if you're in Vancouver, you still have how long? A week? Two weeks? A week? Mm -hmm. A week to see the film. I was just asking Diane in uh, mm -hmm. the gallery. And um, uh, if you, uh, everybody here, if you haven't seen the film, uh, we also shared the link in the, the chat. And then you can have today to uh, watch it as well. Um, great. Yeah, Diane, just share a link. And thanks to Diane. Behind yeah. the scenes. Behind the scenes. Yeah, thank you, Diane. <laughs> she's very shy, so she's not going to show her face. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. Um, wonderful. Um, thank you again, uh, Lisa, Kim, and Elvin. Um, this was wonderful. And uh, thanks so much for spending your afternoon with us. Our pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for dropping by. Okay.